Hello, 8th grade. My name is Mr. Rogers, and you're watching the video lecture for section 1 3 on plate tectonics. This will be on continental drift. And so, this first page, guys, we have our objectives for the day. And our first one is to describe continental drift, and our second one is to explain the evidence of continental drift. Um, you know what? And I did find another movie friend of mine to bring along for the ride here. So, um, for this lesson, we brought along Samuel L. Jackson. Hey! Welcome to the party! Hey, good to see you. So, you know, I really liked you in Star Wars. I think you were Boba Fett? Is that who? Everyone has the right to an opinion, but you are abusing the privilege. Oh, so I'm wrong. Who, who, who'd you play? You, you weren't Boba Fett? You know what? No. Just no. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, you, you were Mace Windu. Weren't you Mace Windu? You know what? Yes. Seriously. Oh, okay. Well, I just want to kind of clear that up. So maybe we'll have you kind of join in um, as the lesson goes along. Okay, sounds good. So let's move on here, guys. Today, we're talking about continental drift. And this is really more of a history lesson, kind of a story of how this came to be. And so it all starts with this guy right here, Alfred Wagner. And Alfred Wagner had an idea. And he had a lot of evidence for his idea, really. really he got the evidence first, then he kind of put it together to create his idea. And his idea was that there, the continents, from the places they are now, they haven't always been there, that they moved to the present location. And that the image over here, which is, yes, this is Earth, but this is probably what Earth looked like about 250 million years ago or so. That the continents have drifted to their present location and were once in this place called Pangaea. This giant supercontinent here is known as Pangaea. And so today we're going to talk about Alfred Wagner and his idea of how Pangaea um, became the world as we know it today from Pangaea. His hypothesis was that all continents had once been joined together in a single landmass and have since drifted apart. And so his theory was the theory of continental drift. is the idea that continents are slowly moving over the earth just like the theory says. And so he didn't just kind of think this out of thin blue air like oh yeah just, let's just think about uh, how the continents came to be. No, he had a lot of evidence to support this. And so it's evidence. What kind of evidence? Alfred Wagner had evidence. And evidence is a good thing, right? Right, Sam? That was brilliant. Good for you, sir. I, I, I think so, too. Having evidence is a very good thing in science. So he had different types of evidence to support his theory of continental drift. He had the idea of landforms. And landforms, what he meant by that, were different mountain types matched up on different continents. Some coal fields from Europe were similar to ones in the United States. They kind of lined up around the same depth, same type of coal. Some big ones were also the fossils. Fossils of the same type of species have been found on several different continents. Um, different type of animals, dinosaurs, different type of plants also. So fossils of tropical plants have been found in the Arctic Circle also, which is kind of weird to have a tropical plant in the Arctic Circle. And that these glacial scratches have been found in South Africa. And we'll take a look at some of these evidences on the big map here in a second and try to figure out what they really mean. So some of the things we just talked about were different types of fossils. So what he found were these up here. Here's Greenland, way up here. And in Greenland, he found fossils of tropical plants. And if you look, Greenland is pretty much exclusively in the Arctic Circle. How can there be fossils of tropical plants in the Arctic Circle? Also down here in you know South Africa, around the Tropic of Capricorn. So typically the same climate you look over here, like around Florida is 30 degrees north. Here's 30 degrees south. And so in this pretty much tropical environment, we're finding evidence of glacial scratches. Now, where we live here in the United States, we know the last ice age, we can map out. We know that there are glacial scratches near us that are even near where we live right here in northern Illinois. We can see those and we have evidence of that. But how can we have glaciers down here in a tropical area where it never freezes, never dips below freezing at all? How do you have glaciers, and evidence of glaciers being there? So there's kind of the two big things he found. Also different animals were found in South America and in Africa, and even over here into Australia. So how are you getting the same plant and same animal across thousands of miles of ocean? So that's kind of the, some big things, questions he was asking that just didn't really seem to add up as he was collecting this evidence. He didn't, didn't make sense. How could we have these animals on different continents? How can we have plants 
across oceans that obviously can't transport themselves. How do you get tropical plants? And so what he came up with was the idea of Pangaea, that since the continents have drifted to where they are, millions of years ago they must have been closer together. And so you have just kind of the southern half of Pangaea, really. There's North America would still be up here, um, and also most of Asia and Europe. But down here we have South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, and Australia. This would have been about 200 million years ago when these continents were all near or close to each other. And so when you line these continents up, what you get are, here's some of the fossil evidences, the big ones on this picture. You can see the different types of fossils across the continents. This Glossopter's plant, a tropical plant, again, they found streaks of these. When they look for them across these continents, they found these all in the green here. Here we have this, this kind of land reptile, the Lystosaurus, can be found across Africa, India, into Antarctica. And again, how can a reptile survive in Antarctica? Very, very cold there. A little too cold for uh, a reptile that's cold-blooded. So we put this together. These types of evidence kind of support the idea that, yeah, maybe the continents were together. And so from the idea of continental drift, he had the idea of Pangaea. And Pangaea was a supercontinent that existed about 300 million years ago. And so since that time, since that 300 million years ago, the continents have slowly drifted to their present location. And so he had some really compelling evidence to support this idea of continental drift. The one thing he didn't have, however, was how. How did they drift or why were they drifting? He could say that they did. The evidence showed that, yes, the continents were in different places based on the evidence of these fossil records and everything else. But he couldn't show why. Why were they moving? And that's kind of the key piece. So his research really got put on the shelf for uh, about 50 years or so um, until we started really being able to have better technology to see down at the bottom of the ocean floor and see what was going on. And uh, develop the idea of plate tectonics, which we'll talk about in the next couple of sessions. So unfortunately for one of those unfortunate stories for Alfred Wagner was he had this great evidence, this great idea of continental drift. He had evidence to support it, but he's kind of missing that how did they move? He knew they moved, but he couldn't really show how they moved. And so Alfred Wagner's research pretty much went, you know, unrecognized for until after his death. So eighth grade, we're going to stop there, I think. Also, before we go, I forgot to mention, Sam, I didn't really get to use it too much, but you were much of a help. So Sam, I don't know why I invited you. You weren't really much of a help today. I don't need your attitude. I have one of my own. Oh, man, sorry to get... Sorry to offend you there. Um, anything else you want to say? No. Okay. Do you want to say goodbye? I'm out. Like three strikes. All right. Well, we'll see you along the way then. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you along the way.